hear my story and let it be a warning for what awaits you and your kin. I was rejected by those who needed my leadership. It was a rightful heir to an unclaimed legacy. I had to retreat to the wasteland. There, my newfound brothers took me under their arms and showed me the way to Salar. The god of pride gave me power, the power that I was rightful to claim. And under his banners, I shall conquer the lands beyond the beacons. No one will stop us. No one can. Under the watchful eye of Savar, the fallen star, we will conquer everything. There is no escape. Hello and welcome to another tutorial on how to paint miniatures. Today, as the intro shown, we're gonna focus on Chaos Warriors, or, in this case, Warriors of the Dark Gods. The Ninth Age has created a very rich environment for these warriors to thrive, and in this case, I'm gonna paint the warriors that dedicate themselves to Savar. Now, as you can see, I painted more than warriors. I painted a whole box, um, a starter set for Age of Sigmar, and I've added some details that I used in all the miniatures. So basically the tutorial is going to be about the uh, Chaos Warriors, the foot soldiers, but you can use all these techniques to any of your Chaos Warriors or Warriors of the Dark Gods. Especially Singe and Savar benefit from this color scheme, but you can also use these for painting Ultramarines or Elder or whatever. Alright, let's go! As usual, prime your miniatures after you clean them, and we're going to start with the biggest surface. With Glim and Blue, we're going to paint the armor of the warriors. Just give it a thick, nice coat of Glim and Blue all over the armor. Don't worry if you stain some of the parts that are not supposed to be painted. After we're done with that, we're gonna give it um, a nice coat of cardboard crimson on the cape. There's actually going to be two coats on this one you see in the first one. After it dries, and we're gonna leave the miniatures uh, laying flat, we're gonna give it a second coat. As you can see, we also paint the banners. And carefully, we paint the inside of the capes. Once this wash dries, we're going to give a second coat. Unfortunately, I forgot to film that, but after this wash dries, I give it a coat of Druchy Violet and let it dry just as you see right now. Next is Lead Belcher, which I'm going to use to paint all the metallic parts. In this case, they are the weapons, the chainmail, belt, and well, there are several metallic parts in these miniatures. The other parts, which are made of metal, are gold. Gold is a great color. It combines very well with the violet and purple and blue tonalities of these warriors. So make sure that you use Gehenna's Gold to pick up the details because it will make your miniatures pop. Followed by this, we're going to use Fuegan Orange to paint the handles of the weapons because they are going to be reddish in color later. Now using white, I'm going to correct all the mistakes that I've done so far. And then it's followed by Seraphine Sepia, which is going to be used to paint the pelts, the skulls, the horns, the handles made of wood. Uh, basically everything else, almost everything else in the miniatures that hasn't been covered thus far. If you make mistakes and stain some things with this color, don't worry, because those stains will look great at the end. So, chill. Followed by this, we're going to use now Agrax Earthshade. This color is going to be used to darken the pelts, the metals, 
and leather as well. It's the usual technique that I always do on all my miniatures for these parts. And now it's done. As you can see, I covered all the metals, all the leather. Next step. With Drakenhof Nightshade, I am going to darken the armor a little bit more and also paint all the sand and stones that I put on the bases. This is going to create a very nice effect like ashes or rocks. Very easy. I darken the plates in the armor because I don't want it to look this pale. It's up to you, but in my opinion I think a little bit darker will look better. Next up is my new choice of inks called Daler Rowney FW and this in particular is Sepia 251. It's a dark, dark color and it makes beautiful transitions on washes. I use it for leather and in this case as you can see gloves, the belt and the boots. I also paint the small lines in the armor which are going to represent damage. Be careful here and if you do it right you will get a nice effect in the armor. The other FW ink that I'm using is called Red Earth 554 and I chose this one because I think it's quite similar to chestnut ink. It's not exactly the same, but it does it does the trick. I use it to darken those places that we painted before with orange. And we're going to use known oil to darken those small crevices and rocks on the sand on the feet and a little bit on the metal as well. Next up is blood leather. As you know, blood leather is not exactly a wash, it's a glaze and I use it to paint the uh, pennants and on that previous miniature I used it also to give a little bit more texture to the face the sleeve on this guy and we are going to use now Ushapti bone or bleach bone on a dry brush to highlight the pelts on the capes of the warriors carefully not to stain the cape I'm using a flat brush here it's just a little bit of highlight, no more. Cardboard crimson again, and after we use blood letter on the pennants, we're gonna put a little bit of that to enrich in the color. This is the same color I use on the shields of the knights. You will see those later. Now we're gonna use white again to highlight several things in the miniature. First of all, we're gonna start with the small damaged lines that we painted before with the brown ink. Then we're gonna work on the horns. And also, we're gonna highlight the skulls, etc. I strongly recommend you use whites very carefully to highlight the visors in the helmet. This is due to the fact that uh, these miniatures don't have eyes per se and the helmets and their visors are therefore the focal points of the face. Going back to Gehenna's gold, we're gonna highlight all those parts that were painted with gold and will be too dark after the washes. Gold fits both the theme of Savar, the god of pride, and Sinch and therefore I think it's a good idea to have these details in that color. Then we're gonna use Iron Breaker and we're going to highlight the edges and blades of the miniatures. 
These warriors take care of their weapons and therefore they should be sharp and ready for combat. So I'm gonna highlight them nicely enough since they look as such. Other details in the miniatures such as the belts and the armor, the chainmail, should be highlighted. I also use my technique on highlighting with stripes the blades of the weapon so it looks sharp. Last but not least, we're gonna use runefang steel to highlight the gold side of the armor, as you can see very carefully, and also the last part of the weapon so they look even sharper. All the metallic details should receive this treatment. Be careful here and it will look very nice. Now I'm going to use Raglan Flesh Shade because one of the miniatures has his head um, uncovered by a helmet. And well, they are humans after all. So therefore I'm going to use the Flesh Shade to paint the flesh. This miniature in particular had a little bit of red on the horns and the eyes beforehand. For my banners, I decided to do a freehand. The theme of my army will focus on a symbol, which will be an eye. As you can see, it's quite simple to do it. I'm using the dark ink, the sepia FW ink, to just doodle around, put some runes here and there, and get the layout of the general concept that I want to put in there. With a little bit of pure yellow paint, I paint the irises on the eye and highlight the runes here and there. Then I'm using dark brown to make sure that the parts that I want to be dark are actually solidly dark. With white I highlight here and there to give it more volume. And with Cassandora Yellow, I darken certain areas so as to make them look um, more three-dimensional. Last highlight on the eyes of the warrior that doesn't have a helmet. A little bit of druchy violet to make those details pop up so the horns and also to darken here and there on the banner And last, I decide to use a little bit of Fuegan Orange to darken a little bit more those eyes, well, the eye, 
and basically the banner is finished that's it for the last step on painting I use Abaddon Black to paint the sides of the bases on my Gisel Black I like black because it goes well with any table and that's it final pictures Overall, these miniatures are great to paint. The big surfaces means that you can do a lot in a little time because you don't need that many colors. They also have enough details to keep you interested in painting, which means that they are very fun to do so. Since the warriors come from a place called the Wasteland and is basically up north and cold, I decided to use some tuft and some snow to finish those. Thank you very much for watching my videos. I hope you enjoyed this one and you can use it in your miniatures. If you did, please give me a like. I'll appreciate that. I'm a very slow YouTuber, but please subscribe so you can see whenever I upload a new video. If you'd like to know more about the game that I play with these miniatures, please visit the 9 agecom Until next time, this is Miguel, signing out. Bye! Bye.